You're listening to Remotely We Are One, a podcast to help inspire others to take their lives back from the office commute. I'm Rick, a passionate beer rep who loves the industry but hates the commute. And I'm Colleen, a remote work advocate and consultant. We're going to speak with some of the top professionals who have managed to avoid the commute as they share stories from the most inspiring to the most comical, all while working remotely. Man, this sounds exciting. Let's clock in. Hey everyone, my name is Tara Vazdani. I'm a civil litigator in Toronto and I specialize in real estate, civil litigation, and remote work. Yes. Awesome. Yes, yes. <laughs> We are here. We are finally here. Are we, finally. We're Thanks live. For joining us, Tara. Yes. It's our first live podcast episode. Woo! It's our first live episode, kid. Gotta start somewhere. <laughs> so we came to DC. What the hell? You, you look good, bro. You look even better. Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, you guys look fantastic for wow. 36 degrees outside. All right. 36. All right. 36. We're not Feels Canada. that way. <laughs> not in Canada. 36 degrees. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your expertise in regard to remote work and legal. Yeah. So, I mean, the law part is pretty boring. I went to law school because I always Mm -hmm. knew I wanted to go to law school. But when it became interesting was I was just sitting at home one day, watched a documentary from The Economist about this digital nomad couple. And I saw them working, you know, one month in Japan, one month in Australia, one month in Costa Rica. And I thought holy cow, how can I do that? Mm -hmm. And secondly, as an employment lawyer, how do employment laws and employment regulations apply to this nomad worker? Mm -hmm. I started to think about how the different laws in different jurisdictions apply to somebody that's working outside of the jurisdiction of their employer. Mm -hmm. And then the remote workspace opened up. And so really it was about drawing a distinction between a remote worker and a digital nomad. Mm. And even then getting finer into remote work, how does employment legislation deal with an employee that's working from home when there's a workplace injury? How do you handle benefits packages, insurance, et cetera? And so that turned into speaking with Laurel, who I know will also be on the podcast, myself, an Australian lawyer and a U.S. lawyer. She put all three of us together and our heads together to think about the legalities affecting remote workers. Mm -hmm. We got a Forbes article going and from there it just exploded. You know, how Mm -hmm. can I dig deeper into this? And of course that happened in May, 2019, one year later, the COVID-19 pandemic. And then it just exploded and I started Remote Law Canada. Wow. Wow. Great story. Great story. Kind of following up with how you got started, as people are approaching you, what are some of the common things or some of the common challenges that people are approaching you asking for professional advice on? Yeah, so in the COVID-19 pandemic, probably the biggest challenge has been my employer had me working from home temporarily Mm -hmm. throughout the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go back to the office and they're asking me to come back to the office now. Mm -hmm. What can I do? Mm -hmm. So that's Ah, the top question question. from both the employee and the employer side. Oh, why the employer? Because they're getting it from their employees. Well, the employer in Ontario, and if you deal with pretty much any jurisdiction, any state in the U.S., it's the same type of laws that apply. Mm -hmm. Once an employee has had a fundamental change happen to their employment and a fundamental change in this case would be previously they were working in office. Now they're working from home. If you try to change their employment again, they can claim a constructive dismissal. So employers are now in a situation where they've allowed employees to work remotely. They Mm -hmm. didn't have a remote work policy allowing them to recall the employee to the office. And they're dealing with, well, can I legally recall them or has their employment term now changed so that they are permanently working from home. How do I avoid a constructive dismissal? That's why it's coming from the employer. Wow. Constructive dismissal. (laughs) Destructive dismissal. Destructive dismissal. So as you can see, we joke around. I love it. So you mentioned before about remote Employees working offsite. Yes. Okay. So what are, in your opinion, what are some of the challenges for locations that remote people 
tend to work in a hotel, for example? Do they have to worry about liability? Did things pop up that just that normal people would never think of as far as legality, you know, jeopardy for the site? I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, of course. So, you know, pre-pandemic, or I guess one of the ways that people used to work remotely and didn't know about it, and Laurel touched on this in the article, was when you used to send emails from your Uber or when you were getting ready to take a plane ride. Mm -hmm. Technically, that was in the context of your employment. And if an injury happened while you were in that Uber or getting ready, you know, for your plane ride at the airport, all of a sudden the employer was liable for the injury and you could claim workers' compensation or something like that. Yeah. Now yeah. that remote work's become more popular, you have situations where they're working out of co-working spaces, mm-hmm. hotels, yeah. et cetera, yeah. and the same type of considerations apply. So in that context, really a remote work policy is key because the remote work policy allows the employee to have input on where they're going to work from. Right. It gives the employer some certainty on where they're going to work from. Mm-hmm. And then you can speak with your workplace insurer and ensure that certain work locations and certain hours of work are covered. Now, where things get murky is oftentimes there is no remote work policy or people don't actually set out the boundaries of the work. So they don't set out their work hours and they don't set out their work location. And so if an injury did happen, let's say at 7 p.m. tonight, and technically their work hours were between nine and five or eight and five, all of a sudden workers comp, are they entitled to it? And I would say no, Mm -hmm. Um, but Mm -hmm. these are some of the things you have to start thinking about. So what can employers do in that situation is really work with their insurer. Mm. And the employee also should be seeking out some sort of, especially if they're an independent contractor, their own injury insurance. You know, one thing that I think locations like this need to consider or co-working spaces need to consider is there's also occupier liability. So if there was an injury here, it's not necessarily that it will have to go through the employer and all of a sudden it's a workplace injury. It could be an occupier injury. Right, in right. the same way that if somebody did damage to your home or was injured right. in your home, you may be liable as the homeowner. So there's a lot of different things at play, but really for a hotel like this, you would think about limiting your liability and really preventing certain injuries from occurring. And then from the employee and the employer's perspective, really set out the parameters of your work. What are your actual work hours and where are you allowed to work from? Interesting. Yeah, I can see that being an absolute nightmare. Yeah. I mean, and you have to know exactly where you're going to be and when you're going to be there to have all those bases covered. Yeah. And so that's where, you know, you start considering, and this is probably the advice I give to a lot of people that want to work as a nomad instead of as a remote worker, because as a remote worker, you're more limited on where you can work from. And oftentimes your employer thinks you're working from home. If you're a nomad, I really encourage them to be an independent contractor Mm -hmm. because it gives you that sort of freedom to choose your work location. And the employer is not held liable in the event of injury or what have you. And there's also benefits that come with being an independent contractor. You can work for other employers. There's no competition clauses. Mm -hmm. There's no non-solicitation clauses. Mm -hmm. You know, you collect your income and then you report your own taxes. You can pay off or make claims for a lot of expenses, you know, so staying in the hotel, Mm -hmm. uh, workplace tools that you necessarily wouldn't be able to claim if you were working for the employer. And so it's an attractive option, especially if you want to be this kind of nomad or working from different locations. Interesting, interesting. So we're here at the ReLead Summit. Yeah! DC, baby, DC. <laughs> I'm so happy to have finally met you I know, in me person. Too. It's so It's so amazing, <laughs> all the connections we've made the past few years. Um, Want congratulations on being recognized by LinkedIn. Yeah, well, congratulations to you you as well. Likewise, likewise. We're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. Yeah, we are. (laughs) So the question I kind of wanted to ask you is, why come to the ReLead Summit? What is it that you're trying to hope to achieve to to participate? And how do you feel about settings like this, you know, where Citizens M and are providing like these tight, small locations for us to all come together? So, you know, first and foremost, I would say it's nice to be out of Zoom. It's nice (laughs) to uh, actually meet in person. We're really not here in person. We're really in Zoom. Yeah, apparently we're in Zoom. You just look for the little boxes, you know. But I've connected with all of you multiple times, Mm -hmm. and I wanted to come and meet everyone in person. And although I think 
something, uh, you know, the wrong conclusion is drawn when people are thinking about remote work. Remote work does not mean constantly meeting behind the Zoom screen. No, no, no. It's about Pandemic freedom of no movement, yes, right? Yes, it's about uh, setting your own work hours. It's about setting your own expectations. Mm. And so everyone coming together here for this summit provides us with the opportunity to discuss remote work in detail, mm. to meet each other in person, to establish relationships that we won't necessarily be able to establish using Zoom. Right, um, right. So, you know, it was meeting everybody that I've stayed connected with until mm -hmm. now, but knowing that we'll be able to develop a strong personal relationship that just is not available behind the screen. It's true. That's number one. Number two, you know, there's amazing people here. We've got leaders from all different industries, mm -hmm. even though we're all working in the remote work space, you know, I do legal, you do consulting, and we can kind of put our heads together. And then it, that exchange of ideas is really going to yeah. help propel the movement forward. Wait. So oh, I can't wait. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I learned something today. What was, <laughs> it? What was the term? Destructive, destructive dismissal. Destructive I love, okay, dismissal. let me say, I love that you're calling it destructive dismissal because it's constructive dismissal. I saw constructive. You said you did say constructive. One. Shit. Edit that out, son. It's constructive dismissal. Yeah. So, you know, listen, I'm going to start saying destructive dismissal. I love it. That's great. That's great. So, so what, what's, what's an interesting thing that not a lot of people know about you? Ooh. Oof. Here it is. Let's wrap it up with the fun. We stuff. like to do this at the yeah. end of every podcast. Episode. I love it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I practice Pilates probably religiously, like every day. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, I don't know how interesting that is. Um, <laughs> kind of thing, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll say this. I mean, I traveled to Thessaloniki in Greece Ooh. in 2012 and I lived there for six months. Wow. Um, I made okay. best, best friends that were from the East. So Slovakia, Czech Republic, okay. Poland. Um, what was the Greece like? Was it cool? Oh, amazing. Oh, it awesome. could not have been better. So I made those friends 10 years ago. Wow. We've stayed friends. They come and visit me. I just booked an Airbnb and we went to stay there. It was a stone villa on Zakynthos Island in Greece. Wow. And all of my friends came there to celebrate my wedding in May. Wow, congratulations. congratulations. Yay, wow. it was amazing. Congratulations. So, you know, it's not remote work, but uh, it's, yeah. um, it's, yeah. it's, you know, the power of social media. And really that's what helped me to stay in touch with these friends yeah. that were so far overseas for sure. 10 years. Sure, good stuff. Yeah. That's an excellent response. <laughs> Where can everybody find you on the so find me on my website at www.remotelawcanada.com. Find me on LinkedIn, on Instagram, um, and recently on TikTok. Oh, Thank you so much. Appreciate you coming. Hey, before we go, don't forget to smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> the bell too, okay? Thanks very much. And subscribe. <laughs> You've been listening to the Remotely We Are One podcast. Visit us at remotelyone.com slash podcast for upcoming episodes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and download our episodes on your favorite podcast app. Hey, hey, don't forget to clock out.